uh, final case. And you can tell your attendings it's my fault that you're late to sign out. I apologize. A 20-year-old man with knee pain. And they did an imaging studies and found a 5-centimeter lytic lesion in the metaphysis of the proximal tibia, uh, sharply demarcated, surrounded by a rim of sclerotic bone. So again, a benign kind of um, radiographic appearance. Who wants to take this one? Uh, good morning. So uh, on low power, we can see fragments of bone lesions that are uh, alternatively uh, pink, eosinophilic, and uh, light blue to pale areas. Mm -hmm. uh, when we went on higher power, the uh, the pink areas are the fibrous citroma, and the pale area to light blue are the chondral mixoid citroma. Good. The cells themselves are uh, bland, uh, spindle to stellate. And um, I didn't appreciate any like mitosis, uh, atypia, or uh, necrosis. Good. And uh, there was also like on the second uh, second slide there was like uh, cross classification, and uh, maybe or bone fragment. Or yeah, I think probably a bit of background bone. See, so we can see a little bit of the lamellar bone lines in there. Right. So yeah, right. probably a bit of bone frag. Oh wait, here let me uh, expand. There we go. Yeah, so bone fragment. Good. Yeah, it can and, be really hard to tell, especially when it's not decalcified. It's hard to see the features sometimes. Good pickup. Yeah, so uh, along with the radiology, uh, I was thinking of uh, chondromyxoid fibroma. Very good. Yeah, this is a really nice chondromyxoid fibroma. And just like you described it as this, to me, they don't really, even though these are thought to represent like kind of precursor, like even a little bit less mature than what we see in chondroblastoma, that these cells are cartilaginous precursors. But to me, it doesn't really look at first glance like a cartilage lesion. It looks like a myxoid lesion to me. So, you know, myxoid and chondroid can overlap, okay? You don't expect to see good mature cartilage very often in this. Just like in chondroblastoma, you're not gonna usually see obvious mature cartilage. It's gonna be kind of immature looking. Same thing here. The cells have, like you perfectly said, spindle to stellate, usually bland, although sometimes you can have scattered pleomorphism and that can cause people to get a little worried. And another thing Mark Edgar taught me is he said the cells kind of look like pennant flags. You know, those flags they have like at, at stadiums, like, uh, you know, baseball games, the long thin ones that look like little isosceles triangles, right? I think it's the isosceles, the, the triangle that's, that's long and thin. And I love that, that the cells do, they really have this triangle shape to them. See how they kind of are flat at one end and then they're long and pointed at the other. So ever since he pointed that out, I think that's actually a really helpful feature, the triangle shaped cells, and they're hypocellular in the middle with a lot of myxoid and sometimes kind of pink sclerotic collagen or kind of more pink dense matrix um, in the background. And then look from low power. And it's hard to tell a lot of times in curette, curette specimens, right? But look at this. There's a vague multilobularity where you have hypocellularity in the middle and look at the periphery, more cellular. So there's this kind of vague pseudo lobulation where you have less cellular zones in the middle and then those areas get more compressed and cellular at the periphery. And again, when you when you get fragments, you kind of have to you have to think of a little bit outside the box because it's hard with curette fragments. But again, hypocellular and then a, a band of cellularity. Hypocellular here, hy uh, hypercellular over at the edge. Same thing on this piece: low cellularity, higher cellularity. I find that finding to be that plus the cytologic features to be very, very helpful. And I've mentioned before, and it goes without saying, I think with bone pathology, you always, always have to have radiology to go with it, or you can make a huge, terrible mistake because there are things on small biopsies in bone. It has to make sense with the location, the age, and the radiology with what you're seeing pathologically. So always get that. And you know, if it's a radiologist that doesn't have a lot of familiarity, just like bone and soft tissue pathology, some pathologists have a lot of experience, some do not. Same thing for radiology, just because they look at bones all day, um, some of them, doesn't mean that they aren't seeing a lot of bone tumors. So if in doubt, you can get a second opinion consult from someone who has experience with bone radiology. And that can be really helpful. It's priceless to have a good musculoskeletal radiologist look at the scans and the imaging when you have a difficult case. So in any case, I think this is a really nice, very characteristic example of chondromyxoid fibroma. These are benign. They can recur locally, but they're benign. And um, uh, sometimes I've not seen one of these, but supposedly they sometimes can have uh, very closely overlapping features with chondroblastoma. So you can have lesions that have kind of hybrid features. I've not personally seen one of those, but these are pretty rare. I've only seen a handful of these in my whole career. Um, in fact, I, I one time saw two on the same day from two partners who were orthopedic surgeons, and I sent both of them out. And, and thankfully my, my uh, 
uh, the experts I sent them to agreed, but I thought the surgeons will never believe me that I made this ultra rare diagnosis twice on the same day. It, I couldn't believe it. I, I had like self doubt. I was like, there's no way these can both be the same ultra rare thing showing up the same day. It was crazy and wild. So in any case, um, chondra mixoid fibroma and guys, we went over by eight minutes. My apologies, but I hope you enjoyed those eight cases. And you all did a fantastic job at approaching these at, um, at your differential diagnosis and workup. I mean, well done to all of you. Bravo. I really, um, really impressed. Very good work. Uh, awesome Yale pathology residents.